Good morning, everybody. Um, when we do our practice sitting meditation, I think our main purpose to learn about life, which is wonderful. You experience and deeper sense we are experience what is going inside us. But when we are in the real world, watching and observing surrounding what is happening in the world, the person who observing that closely, what is happening in the world, it also giving you so much wisdom and awareness to learn about your life. Uh, for me personally, it is very interesting to watch and observe in and out same time. I have to be myself and same time I have to watch inside, same time I have to watch outside what is happening. So then both way we can get wisdom. So like last week I was in Japan. It's a very interesting place to be. Um, two things I want to mention to you. I was in Hiroshima. So first time in my life. So I was kind of excited to be there, go there. But it's a beautiful place. But it is very emotional place. Because 145,000 people died. So still it is alive. Everything is in the museum. We can feel it. It is a very emotional place. Then that moment, I can see hundreds of thousands of people in that place to go and experience that. Everybody is kind of emotional, kind of shocked, kind of dark, uh, kind of negative. Some people are crying. Uh, so in that moment, I was watching and observing my own emotions because... I was facing to 30 years war in my country and also I have been in Gettysburg so many times. So when I was in Sri Lanka or Gettysburg, um, even I know people are dying, people passed away, uh, I didn't feel that much emotions in me when I was in Hiroshima. Because in that place, everything is alive. Everything is the... Uh, keep it in a museum, in the modern technology. Even they can, you know, show us how they put the bomb, you know, how it's affecting to the people. So that moment I learned myself how to manage my emotions and do something for better for the world. Okay, then I, I wrote a whole post, maybe somebody, you know, people are in the Facebook, maybe you read it. So anyway, that's a very interesting experience to see and learn about the world. And also another experience I had while I was in, um, you know, the Tokyo, it is a very interesting place, thousands of hundreds of people. Like in the subways, when you get out from the subways, hundreds of people coming one direction. I never seen such thing. So, so many people I can see, especially American who are there, some people, oh my God, it's crazy. It's kind of annoying to some people. For me, it is very interesting and kind of fun. I was enjoying it. You know, it's a new experience for me. I never seen that many people in one place coming out. <laughs> but they are okay, they are doing their life. In the middle of these dramas in the subways, I saw a young, young mother, you know, with a stroller and pushing the baby. This little newborn baby. This middle of thousands of people. Then I saw that baby is talking to the angels. You know, what did that mean? The baby is sleeping really well. No problems at all. You know, that baby doesn't feel any distractions. That baby doesn't have any problems. Just sleep, like, you know, I, that's why I call talking to the angels, sleeping so peacefully. I was keep watching because they are waiting for the train. I was keep watching, keep watching, no problems. She's, you know, the baby's not waking up and crying and distracted, nothing. You know, the baby's doing wonderful. Then that moment, I was thinking to myself, can I be that baby? <laughs> Is it possible? I'm really sure one day in my life, I was like that too. Not anymore. I'm not talking to angels. 
I am waking up so many times at night, distracting myself, cannot sleep, and thinking what I am going to do. Is happened to you? Yeah, so many. So, do you remember when I, when you was a kid, after maybe after you turn into five years old, do you had a very wonderful sleeps? Getting worse, right? What is happening? What is happening in your life now? In my life, I start to think. We get more distractions. How we get the distraction? Using our senses, we are taking all the information. Then we are processing them. Then it's really, you know, making us tired and exhausted. That's effect into our daily activities and our lives. So once Buddha said, nature of this human mind, true nature of this human mind, it is luminous. How beautiful that? <laughs> nature, original nature of this human mind, it is luminous. In Pali we call the Pabhasara. That means radiating the energy. But the original nature of the mind. So, original nature of this mind, almost the closest example we can use as a newborn baby. I know sometimes baby is distracted, but the, when baby is sleeping, so calm and peaceful. Eat, you know, drink or whatever, just sleep. But we cannot do anymore. Then I start to think, when I was in, um, you know, the France or Italy, when I go to those countries, we go to all the big churches, lots of arts. I was thinking, we don't have it here, you have seen the angels, like western angels? How do you see the angels? Describe me the angel. Huh? Huh? Baby. Babies. All the angels are babies with wings. <laughs> I was thinking, that's the only western thing. Then I was thinking, Krishna. In the Indian... <laughs> The Krishna also are a baby. When we think about the Buddha, always has a, you know, the baby face. We never make angels or Krishna or the Buddha like all, all, all person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, artists, they never do that. Why always have a baby faces? Pure mind is like a baby mind. Baby, like a, that kind of energy. So, what I am asking you now, how we are going back to our original nature? How you lost it? That means we don't know how to manage our senses. So, coming here, doing meditation, all our plans, what we are laying out here, to get into that mindset. Until you get into that mindset, Whatever you do, you are the same difficult, annoying person. That's what happened to us. It's very interesting. So, I am asking you, go and watch. Watch in and out. So, always when you come to meditation, oh, look within. <laughs> That's a very popular word. Look within. We have to look outside too. When you look within, then we can reflect ourselves outside. So then I was thinking, looking at that baby, uh, experience Hiroshima. I was thinking, myself is there. Then I, I was reading, you know, the, the bomb, they put that 8.15 in the morning, 1945, August 15, I think. Hundreds of elementary school children next door. I'm just talking one side. We have both sides of the story, right? So now think about it. Then I was thinking, I, I'm here right now. How I feel. So it helped me to go and experience that moment to understand, make my life better, shake of the whole world. Otherwise, we are not doing a good practice. We have to focus on this. So last night I was in Wisconsin, uh, in a resort and doing, you know, group of people are doing, a, you know, retreat. 
So in that retreat, uh, before the retreat, uh, you know, a couple of my friends, we were talking about, one of my friends said, uh, you know, the going through transition of the business. They build the business. Finally, after many years later, they have to let go the business. How difficult it was. Still, there is some emotional attachment to that. Did you experience those kind of things in your life? Then, in that moment, I was like this. I was listening. Then I was thinking, how about me if I put myself into that situation? I don't have a business. How about the temple business? This temple almost like a business. I spend my time in the beginning to now to build this place with all the monastic and all of you. Now, after this talk, i just making a story. You come to me and said, Bhante, this is enough. Jason come to me and because Jason and Bill are sitting here in front of me now whole 17 years, you both come to me, this is enough. You did really well, don't come again. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please leave this place? Bikuni is so good. She's doing wonderful, we don't want you anymore. When, then I was thinking that moment I put myself into that situation. <laughs> If somebody asks me today, this Saturday morning, can I do that? Then I stop thinking, I'm so happy to tell you, I can do it. <laughs> if you ask me, just leave, I, you know, I know you don't ask, maybe if you ask, I can do it. Then I felt so happy and humble how wonderful, even among all those people are worrying about making the decisions, I can let go. So the biggest thing in our journey, if you can let go, you can be happy. Last night I said, detach bond. <laughs> now think of it, it's a new word I made, made up. Detach bond. Can you have a detached bond? Bond, bond. <laughs> what do you think about it? I don't know. During the talk, it's ke- huh? It's an oxymoron. You know what an oxymoron is? I don't. Is? It's got opposite meaning. Those detach and bond are two opposite. Right. So, because middle of the talk last night, I said detach bond. So now think about it. I don't know the perfect English. But now think about, can you make detach bond? Yes, we can. That is practice. So when we talk about the detachment, that means we have to pack everything, we have to leave. No need to. You can be here right now, but you can attach to this, be here with people and communities and friends and family, children, wife and husband, but you can detach, but still bond is there. Why part of this existence? After you understand that, everything, every situation, every experience in your life, you can enjoy. Otherwise, what people are doing? Worrying. <laughs> then I was thinking, the best thing in my life, best practice I experience, keep letting go. But I have that bond. My job, that's my responsibility, that's my kindness, that's my compassion to the world. I'm not leaving the responsibilities. I have that bond. But mentally and emotionally, we can let go. So, my suggestion for you today, focus on that attachment. Attachment brings you so much pain, lots of distraction to your life, no, like a best example, like Sri Lanka, like uh, Eastern countries, we have lots of monkeys. Monks too. <laughs> <laughs> right? And uh, so, when we have monkeys, you know, we, we drink coconut. Make a hole and drink coconut. It's a very common thing we see in our countries. Right after we di- drink coconut, we throw out the coconut shell, 
So what monkey does, grab the coconut. Then they're looking inside. Then monkey wants to eat coconut meat. Then what monkey does, put the hand and make a, like a little ball or so try to take the hand out. Cannot. Why it is too big now? <laughs> what monkey does, doing like this. Then crying and sad and angry and mad, all the frustration are there for the monkey. Then finally monkey let it go. So good, feel good. Then he licked the fingers and little enjoying little taste. Then looking up and down, you know the nature of the monkey. <laughs> then within a minute, what happened to the monkey? Do it again, forget. <laughs> I think exactly myself, and you all exactly like that monkey. We forget. That's why you have to keep coming to the temple. That's why we are keep reminding same teaching again and again and again and again. So when we are keep reminding you this teaching again and again and again, you are deconditioning. Whatever condition in your life, we learn how to decondition. So to decondition those distractions, what you have to do? Number one, according to the Buddha's teaching, you have to listen. Without listening, listening, not just listening to a song, listening to the true teachings. We call the Dharma. You have to listen to them. Every day, listen to them. Right after you listen, right after you read, whatever exercises you have to do, after you read the books, burn them all. No need them. Be grateful. But burn them all. Or give it to somebody. Otherwise, you become a library. <laughs> no practice. So it's happened to so many people. I can see people trying to figure out this detachment reading a book. But you can get some information, but you cannot get the detachment reading a book. Until you are processing inside you, you are processing yourself, being middle of this nowhere in this world and thousands of people, annoying people, difficult people, uh, annoying parents, annoying children, annoying husband or wife, you can learn this detachment. I think you are living in the best place in this world, this life, this human life. Therefore, take the chance. And don't run around like a, you know, the crazy monkey <laughs> looking for Happiness, you never get it. You never get it. Right now, right here, watching closely your emotions, your feeling, and also what is happening around you in the society, you can reflect, you can learn something beautiful about yourself. So every single day, watching and observing true nature of my own mind, I'm learning myself where I'm at, what direction I have to go. So... Other thing I'm asking you, please die. Please die. When? Now. Can you die now? That's a new thing I'm considering now. Can you die now? I'm not going, I'm not asking you to go and suicide. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. Die now. What it means, experience. That's the last part of your life. When you deeply experience that, what will happen? So the positive mindset, what will happen? He or she start to live. When we think about the death, so many people think it's something negative. It is not negative. It is a most positive experience. If you can die now, then you can enjoy your life. Hurry up. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. So now uh, there are a couple of new practices I keep doing. I always I'm trying to enjoy the moment I'm dying. The moment I'm detaching myself. That means I feel deeper connection to the world, deeper connection to the people, and also beautiful thing I experience in my life, compassion going really higher, elevating my compassion. Why? We all know all human being has these weaknesses. More than looking at angrily or thinking about angrily about somebody, I'm looking at compassionately because that's the true nature of the world. 
I think this is enough because these Buddha kids are coming. <laughs> they are lined up. Thank you so much.